I'm Gus Ibsen. I work for Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal. Um, I want to thank John first and, and um, all the work that HEC is doing. Um, not only is Linda um, herself a rent-controlled, formerly rent-controlled, now rent-stabilized tenant, but she's the sponsor of a couple of the bills in the universal rent-control package. Um, so we've been working with HEC and all the housing groups to, to really try to get this done this year. This is the year to get it done. We've got um, democratic control in both chambers and the laws are up for renewal. So it is a, it's a we're, we're on a clock, but it's a perfect intersection of opportunity here. Um, so we are very excited about that. Uh, it's a good segue also though to the Airbnb issue, which um, is also centered around the issue of affordability with housing in, in New York. Um, and before I get into the, <coughs> the laws and sort of the progression of regulation um, and how the state and the city have approached tackling Airbnb you know, as it's grown um, in, in popularity over the past decade, I just want to lay out the problem a little bit. Um, Estimates vary a little roughly you know, on this, but I think about half of the Airbnb listings in New York City are uh, in violation currently of state law. Um, and so this <coughs> has put Airbnb in a bit of a bind um, where they <coughs> don't want to actively police their website. They don't want to ensure that their um, hosts are complying with law because half of their revenue in New York City is coming illegally. Um, and I will get into what it means to have an illegal listing. Um, but what that is doing is, well, for one, residential units are zoned differently than hotels, right? We are standing in a hotel that has different fire safety <laughs> codes, different evacuation requirements than a residential building. Um, ho hotels are, you know, by the code of the, that governs hotels is, is designed to um, accommodate a higher level of, you know, transient residents, people coming in and out, people who don't live there versus uh, a residential building. Um, the bigger issue, though, is that this has stripped thousands of units off of the rental market in New York City. And I think the most recent estimates we have from um, some data scientists at McGill and a couple of, other, of the housing groups that they've worked with are that about, I think, 13, 50, 14,000 um, units that could be on the, on the rental market have been stripped from the market. And so some of those are affordable units, rent-stabilized, rent-controlled apartments, um, SRO um, apartments, but others are, are market rate, and that just means Everybody who lives in a market rate rent is, is paying more because of the laws of supply and demand. We, we're stripping thousands of units out of our supply, and that means that you know, there's the same number of people who still want to live here. Prices are going up for everybody. Um, not to mention, you, know, I know you, you all live in the city, so I'm sure you've experienced the Airbnb issues. You know, the, there's the noise, there's the partying, there's the loot, whatever, all the stuff that comes with it that you know, people don't want to even sign on for when you, when you signed a lease to live where you live. Um, so how has the state looked at this? Well, in 2010, the multiple dwelling law, and this was sort of the first big law that um, changed how we look at Airbnb, and it doesn't explicitly mention Airbnb. This is, this is it regulates short-term rentals. Um, it is illegal in, under New York state law to rent out your unit for less than 30 days if the tenant of record is not, in re is not home. So if you are home and you are in residence, you can rent out your spare bedroom for a weekend. That is legal. So there is a legal pathway to use Airbnb. If you are not going to be home, if you were going away to your second home for six months, you cannot invite in a rotating cast of characters who are renting out your apartment on a weekly or bi-weekly or weekend basis. That would be turning your home into a hotel, and that is not what we are, that's what we are trying to avoid. Um, you can rent your apartment for longer than 30 days if you are not in residence. It's a longer term stay. I should note for anybody who's thinking about doing this, um, there are often um, you know, co-op bylaws, building bylaws that may be more stringent than what the law requires. So people do have to be careful. People will sometimes call our office and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I have a friend who's thinking about doing this. Um, and I'll, we can explain the law to them, but you do have to be mindful that oftentimes, and this is increasing because landlords don't like Airbnb. It, it brings liability to them. Um, you know, the, the, your building code may be even more stringent. Um, <clears throat> the challenge, though, with that first law, which, I, which gave us a good platform, right, it gave us sort of a regulatory structure, was enforcement. Um, and the, ma the mayor's office um, has a division called the Mayor's Office of Special Enforcement that is tasked with sending out inspectors to look and see what is legal and what is not when they get complaints. It was very hard for the office, though, to police these things because the Airbnb website doesn't tell you very much. Um, and really the only way that they could do this was through complaints coming from neighbors. 
um, or by literally chasing suitcases. I mean, like you've seen it. I, I've seen it even. You know, we work in a mixed-use building. I'm pretty sure in our office building there are, there have sometimes been illegal Airbnb activity. You know, you see three or four suitcases from somebody you don't recognize going up the elevator. You know, maybe you then call 311 and the Office of Special Enforcement gets around to going out there two days later. Maybe they're there still, maybe they're not. Maybe they get there and they're still there, but they're out to lunch and they don't catch the people. They can't break the door down. So it's very difficult under the, you know, under the 2010 law to actually carry out the enforcement. Um, so in 2016, um, <clears throat> the Assembly member Linda Rosenthal passed a bill to make it illegal to advertise a unit that is already considered illegal under state law. So it doesn't change the regulatory regime, it just gives enforcement a tool um, to, to now not have to police the five boroughs of New York City, but they can, they can sit on a computer and police a website, which is a little bit easier um, for them to, to track down. The challenge that we are still confronting, though, um, is that Airbnb is not a willing partner for the reasons I outlined at the beginning. Half of their bottom line comes illegally in New York City, basically. Um, and so they, on their website listings, do not tell you the exact address and unit of where you're renting. It might say Upper West Side, Hell's Kitchen. It might say close to Central Park, close to Riverside Park, but it's not going to give you an exact street. And so unless you recognize the backsplash on the tiling in the kitchen that you're looking at on the third picture, you may not know what unit that is um, where the listing is. So the fight now, um, and the city council um, took a big step to try to do this um, within the past year, is to get some sort of uh, address disclosure um, for people who are renting out to empower the Office of Special Enforcement to pigeonhole or, or pinpoint, I should say, um, where, these, where these listings are happening. Um, and it's not to say that the data are on addresses is going to be public for the public domain so all your neighbors know if you're renting out, but it would, it would provide address information to the, to the pertinent enforcement agency. Um, unfortunately, the court thought that that was um, a breach of uh, the Constitution. <laughs> so there is now a reset and we're trying to figure out how we can reshape legislation at either the city or the state level. Um, to you know, empower the, the Office of Special Enforcement to do its, to do its diligence. Um, but as of right now, if, you know, if any of you are seeing issues in, in your buildings, you do have recourse. I, the, the, you know, the first step is always to call 301 and to just get the complaint. The second step, you know, I think with Airbnb more so even than other issues, is to work with a local elected official's office to actually liaise directly with the Office of Special Enforcement. Because a lot of times, you're going to need to be nimble, right? Like people literally are going in and out of their homes. You're going to need to be sending pictures. You're going to need to, um, you know, sort of actually coordinate a, a plan of, of, of figuring out what's going on. Um, you know, I, the, the, the big issue that I think got everybody really riled up on this was um, almost 10 years ago, and this is what first got the assembly member involved in this, there was a building called the Imperial Court, which is an SRO building up on 79th, which is 100% affordable units. There wasn't a single tenant really living in the building, maybe three or four. There was over 110 units in that building that had been converted into hotels, and, and, the, um, and, and the building owner was, you know, transient, transient resident after transient resident, you could go on any number of listing sites and find it. That's the type of thing that I think got people really fired up about this originally, that there was these commercial operators stripping, you know, 80 units of a building off the market because the return rate on a nightly rental is significantly higher than what you're going to get over the course of a year with a long-term renter. It is just more profitable to rent on a shorter time frame. Um, but now the implications are, are beyond just commercial. I mean, they're, it's, it's having a horrific impact even on the small, because there are so many people who just don't really understand the law, and Airbnb has no interest in telling them the law, um, that it's having a really de detrimental impact both on safety and affordability.